Bullying at school, hey, what can be done? Is the school district ever at fault? Well, let's take a look at this week's case. Involves a real little girl, Amanda Weevil. Amanda lived in Pennsylvania, and she was attending school, elementary school, and she dressed in her own inimitable way. She was dressing in a way that the court papers said was, well, not gender specific, was not the way in which basically little girls normally dress. Well, as a result of this, guess what? She was subjected to bullying at school. And the bullying got worse and worse. And she was subjected to bullying on the school bus. Finally, mom said, enough of this. We're going to take you out of that school, put you in another school. Put her in another school. Amanda continued to dress and conduct herself the way she had always done. And she was subjected to more bullying, this time by different students. This time, the bullying was pretty much the same as the bullying had been at the prior school. So mom said, we've got to have a completely clean slate on this, and I'm going to put you in a another different school and put her in a third school. And Amanda continued to dress and behave as she previously had. And guess what? The bullying continued and it got worse and worse and worse, reached a point where Amanda was suffering post-traumatic stress, where she was suffering a muscular skeletal disorder that was as a result of the post-traumatic stress. Mom said, enough of this, enough of this. The school was aware of this problem because I sat down with them. I explained to them when we went to that third school the nature of the problem, what was going on, and asked the school administration to take the steps necessary to present and prevent this kind of bullying. Well, they didn't do what needed to be done, obviously. So I think you guys in the school district are responsible for the kind of problems my daughter is now having. And she went to an attorney, and the attorney looked at various things, and this was in Pennsylvania, and he said, well, here in Pennsylvania, we have a specific civil rights law. Now, this civil rights law has basically been used in the work environment to prevent various abuses from occurring, such as bullying, but it hasn't been used in the school context, but let's give it a shot in the school context and brought suit. The case went forward, it went to trial, and there, the judge found that, in fact, Amanda had suffered pretty significant damages, that she was suffering ongoing need for psychological counseling, and the judge awarded a, an award here, a verdict of $500,000, $500,000 that needs to be paid by the school district. So what do we learn from this case? What we learn from this case is that here, the school district knew that bullying was taking place and that under the civil rights law in Pennsylvania, the school district was held responsible and ordered to pay for the damages inflicted by the bullying carried on by the students. Now, could this take place someplace other than Pennsylvania? Well, there are a number of states that have their own civil rights legislation, but importantly, there's federal civil rights legislation, which in the opinion of many people would have supported this case. It wasn't brought under federal law, it was brought under state law, so it has a very narrow application. But there are many who say we could have seen a very similar case brought under federal law, which of course would mean it could be brought in any state in the union. Okay, we bring you this case, you bring in cases every week, so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.